The one looked like it was a little clicky. I hope that was okay. Waiting here for the engine gimbal check. You see the nozzle there peeking out. There Sweet. it goes. The engine is also obviously to propel the rocket, but is critical in guiding the rocket on its ascent, but as well as on its descent as it comes in to land on the northern landing pad just two miles north of where the rocket has taken off from. All right, and that takes us to launch. Lieutenant Troll, here we go, New Shepard. Have a great flight, Mannequin Skywalker. Enjoy that shiny new capsule, and we'll see you back home soon at launch site one. All right. So, like I said, this is uh, this will be nice and short. Minus sixteen guidance internal. They we'll get about four minutes of weightlessness, and uh, T minus ten. It gets off the Nine, pad pretty quick. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Command engine start. Two, one, ignition. <laughs> drone shot oh yeah look at her go mission control has confirmed new shepherd has cleared the tower on that her way cool to shot. space from I launch site shot. one in the west texas desert with mannequin skywalker on board right about now the fins on the aft portion of the vehicle are going to start help the vehicle do its roll maneuver oh, that's the cool booster is going to be that. rolling at about two to three degrees per second which equates to a full rotation of the vehicle every two to three minutes this, of course, is to give the astronauts a 360-degree view during the flight. All right, coming up here on max Q, wow. maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket. It's the toughest part of the portion, toughest portion of the of the flight for the rocket. And we've confirmed See, max Q. Excellent. They hit that at only about a thousand kilometers and pretty low altitude too. So that's what we we're saying. Each max, each vehicle experiences maximum dynamic pressure at a different speed it's relative to their speed and their altitude all right you can see on the top the right side of your screen that's where you can follow along as we're gaining speed as she climbs up towards space in the bottom left corner is the altimeter noted in in, in feet above ground level although you may have noticed upon uh at liftoff we were sitting at 3700 feet above mean sea level that's the altitude uh, of our west texas launch site Yeah, so sorry for those of you that are <laughs> uh, now mannequin <laughs> skywalker in there starting to feel those g's around three and a half g's on the way up to space it's very similar to a roller coaster but in that horizontal position of the seats definitely is a much more comfortable ride We're about three thousand kilometers an hour for those of you not speaking freedom units <laughs> and they're about 50 thousand meters at this point. All right, too. now approaching main engine cutoff or Miko. So we're going to shut off the BE3 engine. Miko is confirmed. So notice, of course, it's slowing down now, but it's now still you'll gaining notice an altitude. That the the booster up. and the capsule are continuing as it, it's a, their combined ascent to space as you watch the altitude continue to speed is dropping, of course as it no longer has the propulsion from the BE-3 engine. Yeah, that Separation home. of the two craft is confirmed. You can start to see the two craft in the screen. Yeah, you can see there's two there now. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us live for New Shepard's 14th mission to space. The maiden launch for this rocket. So far, everything appears to be nominal. The two craft have separated right about now is when, if you were an astronaut in there, that's when you'd be able to float around, gaze out of those huge, gorgeous windows, maybe even do a somersault or two. I know I would certainly do that. Wow. And as we've noted in previous flights, if you follow along on the speed on the top right corner, as soon as that speed hits zero, that's when you know that the rocket and the capsule have hit its apogee point, the highest point in the flight of the rocket. So it's over 100 kilometers by now. So they are technically in space now, of course, because it's suborbital, it's just gonna go up and come right back down. All right.
right, we're coming up on Apogee here. Once that hits zero. Boop. And coming there back go. down. It's hit zero, and now they are heading back home. We should have an unofficial Apogee altitude coming up here shortly. It'll be right around 350. But so we've gone well over 100, 100 kilometers. The Carmen line, the official line of space, and there it is, 350,000. 827 feet above, I believe, a mean sea level. So that's, that is excellent. A great flight well over the Carmen line. Yep. Mannequin Skywalker is an astronaut once again. I really hope they give us a replay with the inside now The views. capsule should be continuing to do its slow spin. Everybody gets a window seat in the capsule of New Shepard, but now we're making sure everybody gets the perfect view. So they ten so you can see here that the booster is accelerating faster because it has it's it's uh all right the two less craft drag. are heading back home now the booster is going to beat the capsule back home. Obviously it's more aerodynamically shaped uh, and so it's going to come down first right about now in the next ten to fifteen seconds or so this is when we expect the rocket to hit atmospheric pierce point. That means that's when it's coming back in and it's have it back back home from space and it has enough air pressure upon which it can use its aerodynamic surfaces to push and that will help guide the rocket back to its landing pad again two miles north of where it's taken off from we have confirmation that the wedge fins have been deployed those fins this are at the part. forward section the top section of the rocket that are housed in the ring fin they also help provide stability for the rocket as it comes into land. Yeah, they're the ones that pop out. They're not the drag brakes yet. There's ones that pop out this way. The drag brakes pop out this way. So first, uh, they, they have those ring fins, the wedge fins. You'll see the drag brake deployed very late on. And this booster is, is screaming home right about now. It is, it, at its maximum return velocity is just under Mach 4. <laughs> I want to ride the booster. Sell me a seat on that. So we're looking now for the drag brakes to deploy. As soon as those deploy, you'll see the speed come down very rapidly. You're starting to see that in the top right corner there. Wow. That's already now, that's about how high Starship is And then in fly. quick succession, well, we're going to get the feet. BE-3 engine to restart. The landing gear will deploy, and then the booster will come in for a nice soft touchdown. It's screaming, though. There are the drag brakes. I love how late they light the engine. It always looks like it's going to be way too late. <laughs> Sonic booms. There we go. Engine restart. Touchdown! Welcome back, Sweet. New Shepard. Oh, uh, you can hear our team back here at headquarters enjoying our, this moment for this rocket. That's awesome. What a day! Did a nice little maneuver there to bring it back <laughs> back to the center of the pad, but that is what we're looking for—a completely autonomous system, Patrick. That.